Baggins. Right, um, just an update on Casper because uh, you're probably wondering how he's doing. Well, uh, he's been to vets twice. He went last week. They give him another week of antibiotics because there were signs of improvements, like with uh, his head tilt was, uh, well, virtually gone. And his head tilt's now improved even more. So he's still very wobbly. Well, not well, not very wobbly, but he's still wobbly. And um, he started getting really panicky when I put him in the carrier. So I think he knows the carrier is, is bad because... He sees it as a bad thing now because he thinks, well, every time he goes in the carrier now, it's either to the vets or into the kitchen to have his antibiotics and his critical care. So um, that's what I thought. But then I took him back to the vets today for his follow-up. <clears throat> he says, um, you can now stop the antibiotics and so we'll just see how it goes. Even though he's, he's, still got, he's still got that vestibular disease. And maybe he'll always have a bit of that now, but at least the head tilt's gone. But she said, we'll do it, we'll check his teeth again. And she, she said, oh, she came back out and she came back out on her own. And I thought, oh, my God. And I thought there's something bad happened to him. But she said, took me back in the room and she says, his teeth, his, his top teeth have gone uh, wobbly. She said, especially um, one of the pincers, because they're pincers at the top, aren't they? Like two separate pincers together. And she said, um, the left pincer is actually... Loose. She's. I don't know. How I'm gonna um, trim them, burr them, or whatever the word is. Word is without them breaking. But she said, "What do you want me to do?" She says, "Because um, the other one's stable, but they, we can't leave them like that because they'll just grow long and curl." And I said, "Oh my God! Will he still be able to eat though?" So she said, "Well, I'll see what I can do." So she went back in the back, and she came back, and she says. Um, <sighs> I don't know I don't know how to say this but she says right she says we've done the teeth but she says because the left one was so wobbly it just fell out so he's only got the one pincer out the top so I give him a bit of a freeze dried chicken and he squeaked at that with delight because it's like he's, every time you give him a treat he squeaks as if to say thank you it's so cute so he took that and he was like eating it on one side so I was quite pleased with that and she said right We'll keep up with the same plan now, see what happens. And um, if, if his symptoms come back again, then this time she said we'll have to keep him on antibiotics for a couple of months, really aggressive. But she says, um, regarding the teeth, just see how it goes now, because she's managed to trim that remaining one. But she says, uh, as she said she's done it quite short, so that, um, it won't bother him. I don't mean as short as the other vet did with the bottom one, but she says she's just... Um, Cut, uh, she just um, burned it so it's nice and smooth. And she said, oh, just see how it goes. And if he can't manage to eat that, uh, she said, uh, you'll just have to give him mushy food. And I said, uh, well, will the other one grow back? She said, no, because everything just came out, the root and everything it just came out. It just completely came out. And she, um, I said, did he not? She said, no, he just went dead calm. She said, he, he panicked me a bit, she said, because he went quiet. And, um, but... No, he just, she said, he, then he just looked instantly like he was more comfortable. So I thought, oh, well, that's good, because he's been really frantic these past few days. You can't even hold him without him trying to move and get out dead fast, and you've got to keep your eye on him in every second. <clears throat> but this time, he just went dead quiet. And it panicked her a bit. She thought, oh, my God, what's happened? But um, anyway, she's, that's the procedure. So he's, uh, the top teeth now, is is uh, he's only got the one pincer which has been smoothed and the other pincer has gone it just fell out but she did say she thinks now what's happened is he could have um, developed an abscess in the back of his eyeball which affected all his vest vest vestibular um, system that's why he had all this head tilt stuff like that and that's why he's disorientated because it's probably affecting his vision <clears throat> which makes perfect sense now and then she says um, the abscess probably burst Gone into his gum, and then uh, started to rot away. Well, the teeth, because when he did his when she did his teeth last Friday, she said they was not wobbly. So she said she can't understand it. So we think we're getting down to the bottom of it. We think now that it was an abscess. So um, he's been on antibiotics two weeks, and she don't really want him to be on them um, for another week because it's it's not good in the long run. 
<laughs> she said, we need to see what how he does on his own. And then if it, if, it, if everything's good, then fine. But if he starts to go downhill again, then she said she's working over Christmas. So she said, just bring him in. And then she said, well, um, and I'll leave some inflammatories as well, she said, if needed. And he said, then we'll just have to put him back on antibiotics, but be more aggressive, like, for a couple of months or a month or two. So that's the situation with Casper. So um, the little dude is such a trooper. Like my vet, Emily, said, she said he... he she said he's so calm. She said he, he, he's just like he used to be because she's been having a few problems for the past few weeks. We know we've been being poorly. He's just not been being still for her, or because he's just been frantic. He's not even been still for me either. It's been nightmare. Just, just frantic. He has been like panicking and stressed. And the only time he calms down is when I put him back in his cage. But she said instantly, as soon as that tooth fell out, he went calm, just like he usually is. And now he's, 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 he looks a lot more comfortable. So I brought him home and then I put him straight to where his food is. And he went straight in there. So I'm just hoping and praying that he's not put it in his house and just spat it out and just give up. I'm just hoping he's eating it. And um, which I've got to keep my eye on that. And uh, if his weight keeps going down, then I'll have to mush up his food and shrink feed it him and feed it him. Um, but it's no problem because t- um, hamsters with no teeth can still live quite happily. It just means you have to do a bit of adjustment with the foods. But because um, it's his dwarf foods, the f- seeds are so tiny, she says it, it probably won't be a problem. And she says any treats or peanuts or stuff you, that you give him, you could just smash them up to throw like the tiny pieces anyway. So she says it's just a bit of a hit and miss over the next few days just to make sure his weight's stable. That'll give you a sign that, he's, that he is eating it. Monitor him, see how he's going, make sure his food bowl's getting empty. And about his drinking, because he's not drinking on his own yet, but that's maybe because I've been giving him water as well as critical care, you know, through a syringe. So um, I've got to continue with the water, but the critical care can be stopped now. So I'll just give him a an helping hand, just give him a couple of syringes of water a day. You only need about... One mil, so three times a day. Not one miller. That's that's a one mil syringe. But just a little bit in a one mil syringe. You only need about that much. I think it's not point one or something like that. You know, in a one mil syringe, you don't fill it right up to the top. You just do about that much in a syringe. Or you can use a dropper. You've seen me do a video on them droppers. And you just give uh, do that three times a day until it to make it equivalent of... Um, I think they drink about five mil a day, I think. But... Um, you just do it so you know. Just do the pinch test on the fur if they're hydrated and stuff. And then just keep your eye on it and just see which bottle. Eventually, if they think they're thirsty, and, uh, and they'll just go for the bottle as well anyway. But um, I'm going to do that over the next few days. Just still pop him some uh, water in a syringe. And then see how it goes. And she said, and um, if he doesn't drink on his own, then after 24 hours, if if um, then obviously... I will have to keep giving him water by syringes, but I'm not doing it that way yet. I'm just going to keep giving him some syringe water, sterile water, three times a day, and then uh, make sure he's still eating. And I'm going to get him some baby food tomorrow as well, so see how he goes. So apart from that, we think, touch wood, fingers crossed, that we're getting to the bottom of it now. We think it's it was just a bad abscess at the back of his eyeball that's affected all his vestibular. It must have burst, gone into his gums, because he did have a bit of a puffy face on his left side. His face was going puffy, and she checked that. And uh, so that explained that it must have gone into all his gums. And it sounds a, it sounds a mess. How can I look a lamster again? Abscess like that. It's, it's just... But anyway, that's what we're thinking at the moment. But we can't say for definite until he's completely his antibiotics are completely out of his system. And then if he still stays stable over the next week, then uh, or a week or two, then we can assume then that he was just an abscess. And um, but if he does go go back downhill, then she'll try him again on antibiotics for like I said, a couple of months. And. Uh, We'll just have to see how it goes. But he's due back again on the 7th of January. No, the 8th of January, sorry. 
to have that uh, tooth checked, but she did say, any problems before then, don't hesitate to call her. So, so just for, for in case you guys were um, waiting for an update, there's the update. He's, uh, he's in his little baby bottle because he's absolutely nuts about that house. He didn't like it when I took it out the other day to wash it because I replaced it with um, his wigwam. And he didn't like his wigwam. So he did have a bit of a, um, what's the word, a tantrum. Because <clears throat> he did make that side, all that area a mess. So I thought, okay, I'll dry your baby, your baby bottle. So I'll put the baby bottle house back in and he loves it. And he's got, I'll do a quick a cage tour actually. Because I was only cleaned out yesterday. So he's got his wheel. And it, uh, good news is he was on his wheel before when I brought him back from bed. So he went straight on the wheel after he had something to eat. Don't know how, because he, he couldn't get his balance proper, but he still had a good little run. So anyway, there's his wheel. There's his chew. There's his little moo cow house, which he does use. There you go, guys. Carrot. His blue house, which he does use. He's getting a bit spoilt, really, because he's got four houses. Wood chew. I've, took, I've taken this off, just to make it easier for him at the moment, so he can go in and out, that's why he's still being a bit disorientated. In there, he's got his, another, his uh, bottle where he can certainly reach, but he doesn't seem to want to. But again, maybe that's because I've been giving him enough water. A chew, his food, another chew. That's like his dining area. Then we've got his baby bottle, which is what he's in. We've got, uh, do you remember that um, milk carton ceramic house, what Rosabi used to like? Well, there it is, his milk carton house. Then you've got his bendy bridge and his bottle there, but... You can't climb up that without falling, so he's given up. So that's why it's important, guys, that you must always have a second buckle if, if, if your, your pet's not well. And uh, we've got the, the Amster Times. His little bridge. And another lollipop chew. Well, not another, but one lollipop chew. And, yeah, I've just made it simple now, uh, for a while, just so he's not going to hurt himself. So, I know it doesn't look very extravagant, <laughs> but I've had to do it like that because we don't want him hurting himself. We've been disorientated. That's why I took the um, this bit off. Because with that, I didn't want him banging into that. If I put that back down there, he might bang into it. So, uh, just, he can't climb up on there, so don't worry, guys. I've just left that there. So, this time he can just, instead of going round there, he still uses this all, but... You can just get in and out there, so or in and out there. So that's a bit uh, about it, guys. And um, yeah, I'll, I'll be having well, I'll be having some more videos coming up over Christmas. I've got the uh, squishy one coming up, my squishies. And uh, sorry about the hamster diet ones yet; they've not come up yet. I'm still tweaking them because Maisie doesn't. It's gone really finicky. She doesn't really want to eat the hamster much anymore. So I'm tweaking hers at the moment. I've just added some other mix with it. So as soon as I, I've done all that, then I'll do um, a two separate videos. Instead of doing it like all in one like I did last time, I'll do a dwarf video diet. Dwarf diet video, sorry. And then another one, a Syrian diet video, just so I can give you more info. And I'm not rushing at things. So I will be doing that, like I said, coming up in the new year. I'm just giving Maisie time to get used to the new food. <clears throat> and, uh, yeah. So, catch you later.